That's right, I went to London and I filmed the entire thing. Let's skip through the traveling because airports are extremely boring. I arrived to London quite fast because it's close to my country, the Netherlands. And oh my, what a huge city it is. For comparison, in the Netherlands there are only 16 million people. In London there are 8 million people. That's 50% of all the people in my country could fit into this city. So I arrived quite soon and everything was overwhelming. However, the first thing which was a challenge to me was finding my hotel. I had booked a nice hotel in the area of Hyde Park, which is quite central in London. So the location was really good for my tourism, but first I had to find it. So my first destination was Hyde Park. Hyde Park is absolutely beautiful, but it's also very, very big. In fact, it took me over half an hour to cross the park and find my hotel. One thing you'll notice in Hyde Park are the squirrels. Squirrels seem to be extremely tame and will even eat food from people's hands. I don't know how recommended it is to do this, but it looks cute regardless. I do have to say that these squirrels are not native to Europe. They are uh, American grey squirrels. They got introduced here for some reason, I guess by people who kept them as pets. The European red squirrel looks completely different than this one. However, it seems that this species is more competent uh, at surviving in cities, so it thrives here. And in some areas it has even chased away the native European squirrel. Terrible evasive species? Maybe. But also a very cute one. I felt very free coming to London all by myself. I don't travel that much, although I did go to Asia for two months recently to study insects. This trip was just for my own enjoyment though. Still it was quite impressive seeing such a big city and such a big park. Even when I travel I usually don't go to cities because I'm more of a nature person. So seeing a big city like London was really somewhat of a shock to me. I've been to London before though, but at the time I was 16 years old and I was an edgy teenager so I really didn't appreciate the experience like I did now. I was really fond of Hyde Park. If I lived in London I would probably go there every week. It's a really big old park with a lot of roads, a lot of animals and a lot of birds. And also impressive were some of the plants. Some of the trees were clearly centuries old. So Hyde Park must be quite old. It looks like a very nice landscape to me. Hey, you know what? Hyde Park, it's an excellent place to make vlogs. If I lived in London, I would record my videos here. Look at how big it is. But uh, I have to hurry up, because it's starting to get dark and I have to find my hotel. It's called like the Holiday Villa Hotel. But uh, it's windy, but I'm close, so this is going to be my first travel vlog sort of, day of thing. I know that in the past I have made videos like this, but this is going to be the real professional one. And I just love the autumn vibes here, look at that. Yellow leaves, dark skies. The atmosphere is really interesting, don't you think? Would have been better to meet up with one of you guys though. Maybe tomorrow I get to meet some people, I don't know. Otherwise I'll explore the city myself. But uh, 
I'm still a small YouTuber, so I can't expect to meet people every time I travel. Not yet. Maybe when I'm famous. Just kidding, or am I? Okay, let's go. I am terrible at navigating, and finding my, ho my hotel was a bit challenging and scary. As I started to turn dark, but luckily we kids have technology used, and Google Maps made everything 100 times more convenient. I remember the times I was young and my parents were struggling to read maps. At least I'm not of the generation that requires all that nonsense. For me it was straightforward, quite straightforward to find my hotel before it got dark. And finally after walking to Hyde Park for what felt like hours, I saw an exit to the part of the city where I had to be for my hotel. So I climbed down and I had some very nice impressions of the busy streets of London. Typical red buses are to be seen about anywhere but The hotel that I was trying to find is called the Holiday Villa Hotel. And it's a hotel that I can recommend simply for its location. Because it is for the price, it has an excellent central location within London, making it easy to visit the city center without too much walking or traveling as I navigated through the streets. I was at first unsure if I could find it, but later I finally stumbled upon it. It felt quite good seeing a city like that, and it's quite atmospheric. London also felt quite warm for this time of the year, and I guess these big cities have some kind of warming effect. Because even though outside of London it was cold, as soon as I entered it I felt like a warm breeze that covered everything. So, as it became night, I finally found it. Holiday Villa Hotel. There it is, finally, my own hotel room. Let's go inside and see what it's like. Hey there, sexy, what's up? I see you're getting fat. Maybe I should go on a diet. If I keep eating like this, nobody wants to see me on TV, right? Oh, by the way, that's a joke. Well, this is the uh, hotel I booked. It's decent, it's decent. Well, this hotel, I've chosen it not for the room, but for its location, because it's in the middle of central London, literally. So, oops, turns out it was the light button. Of course I could have gotten something more luxury, but there's no need for that. For me it's more important to have a good central location. So this is the uh, hotel. This is where I'm going to sleep tonight, all alone. <laughs> Just kidding. I barely made it on time because my phone was empty and had a few percent power left and without Google Maps I would be much more helpless. So I couldn't go explore the city because my phone needed power. Time for a shower instead I guess. I had nothing to do until next morning so my guess is that I could still go and explore the city a little bit and see some previews of the beauty of London before. We start all the action. We've been over this privacy thing before. This is the second time it has happened. Okay, if this happens again, I'm banning you from watching my videos. Being the awesome social media person and businessman that I am, I had a great idea. Men of the internet, and I mean real men of the internet, like me. The age of ethos is over. For we have taken back our rightful place. We just have to be a little bit smarter as YouTubers. And those girls are. And therefore, I present to you, oh yes, Buck Coppins shower water. Woo Everything you just saw was a joke. A joke. <laughs> now, why do I have to explain obvious jokes on YouTube? 
Well, some people laugh at these things, but you can't deny that some people that watch these sort of things are a little bit slow in the head. And every time they make obvious jokes, I get comments like, Whoa, Bart, are you seriously doing this? The answer is no, I don't do, seriously do anything. Okay, I only joke. My life is a joke, I'm a joke as a person. The world isn't a tragedy, it's a comedy. I'm really just waiting for my first internet controversy as a small YouTuber that will make my channel grow. YouTube, they call it spilling the tea. Enjoy. Okay, now we had that part over with. You know what's really cute about these hotel rooms? These tiny little tea thingies that they have. So I'm gonna make some tea, man. For real. No shower water here, look. What's this? This is tea, man. Oh wow, it even has coffee. Very good. Now, little old, old Bart here, he has an addiction to energy drinks. So he's gonna head out in the city in a few minutes to get some energy drink to, um, so he will not die from withdrawal symptoms. So, I hope he makes it. Meanwhile, he's gonna make some tea and charge his phone because without Google Maps, I'm probably dead here. Man, this thing is broken as heck. Take a look at this. When I pull on the cable, it's boiling. And when I let go, it's I'm probably gonna get electrocuted if this keeps up. Oh wait, it's, it's cooking now, it's cooking now. Give me some goddamn coffee. Yes. Oh yes. Here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The life of a social media star. I'm just gonna sit back because I don't want this thing to splash hot water all over my legs. Why are you not wearing any pants, you ask? Hmm, you wanna know why? Well, fuck you, that's why. It's comfortable. So, and I have no shame. Zero shame. It's sort of boiling, I guess. Dude, is it going to stop boiling? I don't trust this thing at all, man. You know, this thing should switch off. Ha, huh. phew. I thought it was gonna explode for a second. It's uh, better than expected, I guess. Wow, look at that, a coffee making vlog. Yes, my channel has gone a long way. From butterflies and moths to making obnoxious jokes. But uh, coffee should be good. Oh yes. Welcome to the exclusive Bart Coppens coffee vlog. This is uh, quite something. Hotel room coffee. Is there anyone on the internet that's tried to review this stuff yet? Because maybe it has potential for a new channel. Coffee reviews. Probably exists. There was this guy who I saw on YouTube. He had like 10,000 subscribers by uh, eating rare kinds of fruit. Yes, fruit. And reviewing it. Well, basically, holy shit. Guys, I just opened this milk creamer thing and it's basically rotten inside. That's, n that's not acceptable, dudes. That's so I uh, probably wonder if the same thing has happened with this one. Christ, have you ever had this happen? I'm scared, oh my God, it's exploded. Well, this looks normal, but do I trust it? I don't know, man. Am I gonna poison myself? Oh wait, I drink Monster Energy every day, so who cares? Whew! Wonder what must have happened for this one to become rotten inside. Never seen that before. It's kind of disturbing, man. 
So my new channel where I'm gonna do coffee reviews. Maybe I should do milk creamer reviews. A dead one? I give it a zero out of ten. I mean, dude. That's the least thing that I expect from a milk creamer in my coffee is that it's at least not rotten or something. Phew. Good metaphor for my personality. I'm an impatient guy, so I'm probably gonna pour some tea at the same time. Coffee and tea united as one. That's one of the most cringy things I've ever said so far. Gotta have that sugar. Gotta stay fat. So. In case you were wondering what the hell I'm doing. I want like 60% energy on my phone at least. 60% should be good. Because um, <clears throat> it's about, um, about 9 o'clock in the evening. Which is kind of late. But I still want to explore the city for a little bit. I'm not going to go to bed yet. It would be kind of sad just arrived in London uh, not to fall asleep immediately. It would be cool to walk around, uh, see if I can find a supermarket. Just scout the area a little bit for tomorrow. I'm just going to be here for one day now. And uh, the second day will be an insect fair. That's what I really came here for, not for London. I mean, London's a great city. But uh, my sick mind only thinks about insects and nature and that's the main thing I will travel for, not just for sightseeing. It's hot. Hope I'm not gonna be poisoned by the milk creamer. Ugh. That's some bad coffee. Maybe the tea is better. Oh, it is. Of course, I'm in the United Kingdom. Here's one tip, if you will go to the United Kingdom, don't drink coffee, go for tea, okay? They know how to make the best tea, but they don't know how to make milk creamers. Man. All right, guys, I'm going in dry. I'm gonna explore the area blind, trying to get to the center of London. Um, it's about 10 o'clock at night, but I don't care. This is London. This, there should be something to see all night. I don't want to go to sleep yet. So uh, I'm just going to go find the center. It's surprising how warm it is here at night, because it is basically autumn. And this city has a really strange warming effect. At last. Civilization.
turns out that when I visited London there was a huge climate protest. And the climate protesters had occupied one of the central squares around London. It was quite interesting because I didn't mean to find these people. I randomly stumbled upon them. So I thought it was interesting to capture some footage for all of you to give you an impression of what it's like. Now you're probably wondering what do I think of these protests? Hmm. If you watch my YouTube channel, you would know that most of my videos are about the environment. And that I am very pro conserving the environment, in fact. So, I agree with the general message that these protesters have. Which is the fact that we should spend more money on our environment and should focus less on our economy. That being said, I don't know if I would be one of the people you could see at this protest. Why is that so? Well, despite the fact that I somehow agree with the message that these people have. I'm not exactly sure if I want to be associated with this crowd. Because they didn't make an impression on me of being very educated people. If you really, really care about the environment, what I think you should do is go to school, finish an education that revolves around biology or ecology or the life sciences. And then you will have your voice heard. Because if you are an actual biologist, your work can influence the environment directly. Or you can go into politics. That's another option. If you are highly educated in ecology, there, there are ways that you can directly influence your environment. And I did have the impression that some of the people here were by no means biologists or highly educated people. Now this sounds very elitist and snobby. But that's not the way I mean it. I don't mean to say that these people are completely stupid. But they did tell me some interesting things. Like the fact that we are changing the natural vibration of the earth, for example. Which is somewhat pseudoscience. I think that if these people aligned their views with science a little bit more, they would spread their message a little bit more successfully. Although I don't want to sound too, uh, too, too negative and elitist here. Because I still think it's great that there are so many young people that care about the environment. And in the end of the day, it's better to have people protest in favor of conserving our environment than nobody at all. Because in some cases, voices of people who will favor conservation of the environment above profits, well, these voices are generally more drowned out. So, that being said, I think climate change is a very complex issue. I myself do believe that humans have an impact on climate and that human actions can change the climate. Although I don't think that climate change is for 100% influenced by human uh, interaction. So, I don't really know how much of climate change is because of humans and I don't know how much of climate change is because of this just the climate itself, which also changes very often. And that's what I find very difficult. And that's why I haven't made a video about the subject yet, despite talking about biology, nature and the climate very passionately. Because I don't know where exactly where to stand on this issue. I haven't talked about it yet. I'm scared of saying something ignorant and changing my mind later. That will make me look stupid as a YouTuber. I'm not one of those YouTubers who is very eager to share his opinion, even though it could be wrong. If there is a high chance that I can be wrong, I will rather say nothing at all. So, I'm still thinking about it. Where do you stand on climate change, my dear um, followers? Are you a subscriber of this channel? Do you believe in climate change? Or do you not believe in it? Do you think humans influence it? Or do you think it's natural? Please let me know in the comments because I'm very curious to know what my audience thinks. You crash at the M25, you crash the tunnel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me to shush. You crash at the tunnel. Wait a minute. Right, you crash at the tunnel, right? You want to call an ambulance to take to Medway or do you want to take a truck to take to Medway? Wait a minute, don't tell me to fucking shush. No. Right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't you fucking shush me because I'll punch you in the fucking face. Do you want me? If you crash in a Dartford tunnel, do you want me to take you to Dartford? That's not a trauma hospital. Do you want me to take to Medway? That's a trauma hospital. 
It's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. Right, hmm? do you want to take ginger beer away? You don't like it? It feels a bit interesting. Oh, come on. Okay, much, sorry. Mate. No, no. Right, if we have. After that, I went back to my hotel. I'm talking here to the camera, but I cut out the, uh, out the audio because I didn't like this. It's not important though for the travel vlog. Point was that I was going back to my hotel after having an impression of London, which looks very promising and I was very eager to see it. But I arrived a little bit late, so it was better for me to find my hotel, go back to sleep. I checked back next morning to see what was going on in the big city. So. Oh yeah, that's right, we are in the United Kingdom. Here comes the rain. It's six o'clock in the night and I'm still not at my hotel. I made a miscalculation. And that miscalculation was, London is fucking bigger than you expect it to be, man. Oh my God. It's going to be morning by the day I get home. I shouldn't have gone so far. I don't know how the public transport works. Whew. But uh, I still have to learn these things, guys. I'm a young man. I need to gain my wings and my independence. And it includes learning to find my way in big cities. But over. My God. <sighs> Finally, I found it. Gee. My, I'm so tired. I'm so tired, guys. What an adventure. Time to go to sleep. Alright lads, day number two. I'm gonna go for it. Time to go into London and see what's going on. And I also had the great idea of going to the Natural History Museum. Let's go. So, it turns out that I already have enough influence and enough subscribers to go to any major city in the world and have people that want to meet up with me and show me around. And in this video I was on my, may, on my way to meet Rachel. Rachel is a girl who lives in London. And what's interesting is that Rachel actually does not watch my videos. You would expect that the people I meet up with on the internet are people who are followers of mine who watch my videos or check out my websites or my other platforms. But as it turns out, there's also people who are friends with some of my followers that are still interested in the social aspect without being interested in moths. And you know what? That's actually good news. Because that means that my network is not only directly related to people who are subscribed to me, but the word also spreads to people who are associated with them. First I had to go to Hyde Park a little bit to go to the Natural History Museum and meet Rachel. So here are just some nice impressions of some of the things I saw. A squirrel and an old beautiful looking monument. I really like how historical London is and how old it feels and authentic. It's a beautiful city. I'm not a city person but for London I have a soft spot. Anyways, I was getting close to the museum.
Okay, there you go, Rachel. Okay, so I'm in a natural history museum and I found a native British person to accompany me. Thank you, Rachel. Because they were collected many, many years ago, and so the areas they were collected in might be completely transformed. Some of them have been collected by famous scientists themselves, like Darwin, Linnaeus. You might have initially thought was the butterfly, judging on your prejudices, um, it was actually a moth. So yes, it's not true that the moths are, can, can be colourful. And in fact, there's um, there's much more many moths than butterflies in the world. I think this one will be sufficient. Yeah. But they stir, they show. So the wing is like that. Can you see the pattern there? Yeah, that's beautiful. So this is called Automeric America down to. Uh, Central and South America, it's called Otomeris. It's many, many different species, and the caterpillars are also of the spike. Oh, yeah. But do not touch it, yeah? No, no, no. This is it should have been captured on camera. Oh, wait, we're gonna get one now. Never mind. I mean, this is some kind of protest. I don't know what it is that they're trying to convey, but. I mean, you could also just make a sign saying the things you believe, but uh, I guess this is, this is more fun to do. What you just saw was me and Rachel going to an event about moths in the Natural History Museum of London. How big is the chance of me going to London for one day and there being an event about moths? That was quite interesting. There was a presentation and a scientist who works with moths and he also presented a few live specimens of Automeris. I didn't expect to see that, <laughs> but it's quite funny how I go to London and I immediately see one of my favorite species. In fact, I think I have a video of that exact same species. After that, me and Rachel just checked out some parts of London, including the Natural Gallery and some nice shops. We also had some Chinese food. Rachel was a really nice girl and I'm happy that I met her. She seemed a little bit down to earth. And at the beginning she was a bit shy, but later she showed a little bit more of her personality. I hope that next year, if I ever visit London again, I can check up on how Rachel is doing. Thank you for showing me around, Rachel. I appreciated the time that you gave me. Even if you are not a moth YouTuber. I'm totally gonna document this. Hey, look, golden Oreos. Wow, I don't like Oreos, <laughs> but I like some of them. Uh, Oreos are overrated, man. What's that? No, I don't know it. I don't know what shortbread is. 
as opposed to long breath. Oops, sorry. Rachel making a selfie. <laughs> Hey, they have a drink section. They're going to think that you stole it. Okay. I'm not impressed. Whoa, 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 what's the No monster energy, what a way. I'm not impressed by the drinks. They even have a second floor. Yeah. I mean, oh wait, <laughs> never mind. It, that's not going to lead to candy. Come upstairs, I have some candy. Wow. So this is the power of the British Empire. Oh, they have the worst flavor of monster. Oh, they have shit taste. Yeah. Well, almost all of them, yeah. I told you I'm sick. For me, it's, for me, it's all or nothing. Either, either I just like. Either I make no effort or I go all the way. It was satisfying to explore the city by night and the view was absolutely gorgeous. For a guy who doesn't go to the city that often like me, it was really impressive seeing it on the net night. Me and Rachel had a good time. We even tried to fire, go to a pub, but somehow we got lost on the bus. So instead I went home early because the next day I had to go to an insect fair where I wanted to be quite early. So this is me sitting in a bus going back to the hotel and day number two was going to be an exciting one for I was going, finally going to do what I actually came to London for looking at insects and buying them the insect fair oh yeah that's up to a 20 <laughs> Silver factions too, I see.
expert from, uh, from Ireland. Yes, I'm, my YouTube is the Silent Mark Trapper. <laughs> Hi everyone. Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's nice that they're so variable. Yeah. What you brought, Timothy? Uh, I bought some uh, garden tigers and uh, some sammy and Very good, very good. <laughs>
13 more years old. Yeah. Okay. That's not much time, you know. I'm still. I am 13 and you're 13 more years. That's true, that's true. I don't know if I look. Hey, wait a second. Do you guys remember this young boy that I'm filming here? This is Thomas. And one year ago he met me in the Netherlands because he watched my YouTube videos. Do I follow Thomas around? Or does Thomas follow me around? Either way, Thomas was a really, really intelligent boy for his age. And I think that when he grows up, he will be a very good biologist. I really hope he pursues a career that has to do with biology. Because I'm impressed by what a kid knows at this age. Thomas is actually from Portugal. So it's quite interesting that I've already had met him in the Netherlands and later in the United Kingdom. And I have a feeling that that's not the last that I'm going to see of Thomas. I don't know when, I've, if, when I'm going to see him again, but I'm quite confident that the day is going to come that I see him. So Thomas, I hope you study hard at school because you have a lot of potential. I can't believe you already know the scientific names of all the plants I showed yeah, you. Yeah, Thomas. So this is Thomas, and he watched all my videos, and I think someday he will make a very good entomologist, because I think he is very intelligent for his age. Really, I'm impressed. I hope I see you another time. Bye bye. After that, I literally had dinner with Thomas and Timothy's parents. That's right. I'm having dinner with my fans. Oh wait, you're not my fans. You're, by, you're my friends by now. I should call you friends, not followers. Anyway, I was very glad to meet you guys. So, I hope both of you will never hey, stop caring Timothy. about insects when you grow up. Timothy! Bye! Bye. Oh boy, was I tired. Oof, I was tired after two days of intensive walking. Well, two and a half days, but it isn't over yet. Because there's still a third day. I had to find my hotel, which was the Premier Inn. An awesome hotel in Sudbury on Thames. I can recommend it. Oh wow. It's actually quite nice. Oh wow. Bigger than I expected, man. For day number three, I agreed up to meet with a girl named Arina. Arina is actually from Malaysia, but she was visiting her family in the United Kingdom for a few weeks. So, coincidentally we were at the same place at the same time, despite living both across the globe from each other. I was curious to see what Arina was like. I am a huge fan of English breakfast, it's the best invention ever. Although it's probably not the healthiest breakfast, but it's worth the heart attack. Say hi. 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 Okay. So, <laughs> I'm testing it first. I'm testing it first. Okay. So I'm here in the Natural History Museum, and here I found someone, a random person from London who's actually from Malaysia. Sorry, it's not a random person, it's a friend, okay? I was wrong. I am a friend, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Alina. We also sometimes cringe when you overhear children asking things to their mom like... Arena and me went to the British Museum and the Natural History Museum in London. But we had to go very fast because I had to catch a flight back home in the evening. So we only had half a day sadly. Despite that I really quite enjoyed my time. It was very nice to see these old British museums. I see all these old artifacts and to learn a lot about nature and ecology. 
So if you like museums, I definitely recommend going to London because it's one of the best cities when it comes to museums. And the best thing about all of this is the access to the museums are surprisingly free. It surprised me because in my country, most museums cost money. Even the natural history museums cost money to access. And to see such a big museum like this, accessible for free, that's quite interesting. If I was in London, I would probably chill there every day. The British Museum also had a lot of cultural artifacts, which were awesome to see. I don't know a lot about history and culture, sadly. I wish I knew more about it, but you can only study so many things at once, and my mind is already occupied with butterflies and moths. I enjoyed my time with Arina, and I think she was a very sweet young girl. And what really surprised me was her knowledge. Arina, when we were strolling to the museum, explained me just about anything about the items we saw on display. I was taken aback. This may sound a little bit, a little bit egoistical, but I'm not used to people schooling me. Usually I am know it all. Notice how in the following video she is schooling me. We were Hindus, and then culture changed, we became Muslims. But it was not as... Um, as that... Uh, I don't know from, from what era this was. 15th uh, century. Uh, yeah. 16th century. These really, really, really old maps, they took like... a hundred years to develop. This is Asia. Oh, this is... This is, this is right? Is it? You can't, this is India. Where are you? I don't know. This is, this is Asia. Okay, this is Java. Why is it so big? It's bigger than the rest of Indonesia. It doesn't really make sense, does it? You but I think maps used to be more almost like an artistic thing, honestly. I think Java, when Malaysia was born for Java, so I, we had some cross culture problems. Really? What does it say? I don't know, I just can read it. Oh. Is it old language? No, this is Quran. This is the Jewish Quran. Oh. That's why I know it's Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's morbid. Because I don't, I don't plan to bury you yet. <laughs> oh my God, sounds scary. That's mm. proof in your book. Yeah, maybe next year. Oh. For now, I still need you alive. Oh, it's not, a, it's not a mirror, it's a chest. It's not a casket. It's not, it's not a casket. Yep, this girl really knows a lot of things. Never stop learning and being curious, Arina. I hope you stay that way when you go back to Malaysia. Anyway, we had some fun in the museum, but it was starting to get late, and soon we had to go home. Of course, there was still Hyde Park, which was a huge obstacle and distraction every time I had to go from the city to my hotel, or from my hotel to the city, but also when we had to go to the Natural History Museum.
Hyde Park is awesome though, I spent a lot of time there watching the ducks and the birds. It wasn't a punishment to walk through it for the last time. Although I have a feeling that I would be back in the future. I don't know when, but I'm fairly sure it's gonna happen soon. You smell like fish. <laughs> Why does it sound wrong? Mask water to start to blow oxygen. Place the mask over nose and mouth and breathe normally. Yep. Sadly, all good things come to an end, including my visit to London. It was a marvelous experience, but it's time to say goodbye now. Thank you for watching my video. My name is Bart Coppens and I am a YouTuber. And lately I've been quite successful at being a YouTuber, although I still have a lot to learn with my growing medium-sized channel. Did you like this video? Then write in the comments what you liked about it. And if you have more tips for me, what you would like to see, then please say it, I'm open to suggestions. I make videos about nature, entomology, biology, and mainly butterflies and moths, which are my main interests. And I am not a travel vlogger, but when it just so happens that I go on a small vacation, I already have a camera, I already have a channel, and then I will try to vlog it for all of you. It's not going to happen often, but if you know, know a nice place where I could go to make a video, then write it in the comments. Bonus points if it's close to the Netherlands. I would love to go to Australia, or America, or China, but my budget and time doesn't allow it. Maybe it will in the future. But for now, if it's close to the Netherlands, then it's more likely I will go there. I am open-minded though, and I'm pretty sure that in the future, I will have more resources available. Here's some nice images from London in the sky. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Last but not least, I want to say, my YouTube channel is entirely demonetized. And that's a big problem because YouTube is not supporting me and my content. So, thank you very much for all my patrons who helped crowdfund me to do what I want. And if you like my content, 
Consider becoming a member of my crowdfunding platform Patreon because my channel runs on donations for 100% and without them it's not even possible to make videos like this and grow my channel. Thank you all, hope to see you next time. <laughs> There's no hope for her, guys. He loves me, really. Stop laughing, cook. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's actually an e -fort. Thank you.